you know, it's pretty warm, okay, mm -hmm. but it does take time for this to heat up. Mm -hmm. But what you do when you have it warm like this, you always want to test it on your arm, okay? Make sure it's not too Over dry. in this section. Cool. And your hands are kind of more used to some heat, but you want to do it just like you would a baby mm -hmm. bottle, you know, just to make mm -hmm. sure it's not too warm because you certainly don't want to cause burns, okay? And you've already got this stuff hooked up. Yes, that's all together, and I can go through and show you how to put yours together. Okay, I just wanted to have some warm and prepped for you. Thank and you. Let me see here for spice. Well, we're going to bring up the record and see about the bottle. Oh, this is, I want you to meet Demo. <laughs> this is Demo. Demo is my demonstration oh, doll. Sweetie. Okay. <laughs> now, so because Demo does not have a lot of loose skin like your kitty does, um, we have a little um, a cotton piece. Skin. So to pretend this is skin for you to slide it. Okay, so we're going to use demo first. That way you guys can have a feel about handling a needle, handling, you know, things like that so it's not too much of a shock. Okay. Um. Yeah. Okay, so move this out of the way. Well, I do want to weigh her before she leaves too at the end there. Yes, we're going to weigh her before we do the fluids. Oh, okay. Okay, because you know they do waste them. Yeah. Um, so Let's see, um, it looks like um, Dr. Romano wants you to be giving 100 mils of sub-Q fluids twice a week. Okay, and I'll show you that on the bag. needles out. Now, one thing with um, especially senior kitties, they tend to have very thin skin and they tend to have a very um, lean body, you know, um, and so it can be difficult sometimes to not poke the needle through both sides of the skin. That can happen. Okay. okay. If it does, don't panic. Pull your needle out and go to another location. You don't necessarily have to change the needle if it happens just once, but if it happens a couple times, you may want to go ahead and swap your needle. And how do I know that I've done that? I'll show you. Okay. Uh, I remember having to do that now, warming the fluids. Okay. Okay. Now, um, since there are two of you, one person can hold the bag up or not. What you can also do is there's a little flap right here. You can put a hanger through it. You can put it on a door or a shower. We have an IV cool. No nope. shot it got on eBay. Right. <laughs> That'll work too. Okay. Now most IV poles are adjustable in height. Um, so be sure when you have the bag placed that it is firmly um, cinched down so it doesn't like all of a sudden drop on you. Right. <laughs> so right. Fine. Right. Okay. 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 Right. Now if you look here on the bag. Okay. Each of the numbers is 100 mLs, okay? The small lines in the middle are 50 mLs, okay? So from the one to this line is 50 mLs, okay? So right now, we're about almost, um, almost at 250, little shy. Now, there can be um, some differences if you have a bag like this versus if the bag is like this. You notice uh -huh. the difference is about 50 ml. Okay, so you want to try and be a little consistent on how you're holding the bag. You know, so if you if you check it here uh -huh. and you're giving the fluids, you don't want to just you know do like this. Try and kind of hold it where you started to have a better and idea. You said how many is she supposed to get? You're going to be giving 100 ml each time. Okay, now when you first use your bag, it can be a little confusing because a lot of times the fluid level is up higher. But when you go to, you actually want to make it to the one. It doesn't look like you're giving as much for the way the bag is distended like this, but you are giving 100 amounts. Okay? So, um, I always have a symptom. Okay, I'll, I'll pause it now <laughs> so we don't capture that. So, with your IV line, there's two places that you can cinch the line down. And when I say cinch that down, I'm referring to stopping the flow of fluids. Okay? Now. So you have this blue in here, and as you can see, it's pinched off right now, okay? If you look here, um, it's tight on the line, okay? There's like a little gap right there, but right now, uh -huh. it will not move on there, okay? This is stopping the flow of this, okay? There's also a second one here. 
this one has a roller ball, okay? So if it's at the top like this and is able to move along the line, if this part is open, the fluid will run, okay? If this part is rolled all the way down and will not move on the line, you it'll can stop. stop. It'll come down mm -hmm. to there, though? Well, it, it's, there's the already oh. fluid in line, so it'll just stop where it's at. So if I remove this one and make it so it can move on the line, it's still stopped and not flowing because it's clamped off here, okay? Hmm. So a lot of times I just leave this one rolled down, but you can do it either way, okay? Now, this well right here, you can see is half full of liquid, okay? This is good because it can show you how quickly your fluids are running, okay? Every now and then, this will fill up. And so when that happens, you're not able to see how much is how quickly it's dripping, in which case okay, you just flip the bag upside down and give this part a squeeze. And when you flip it right side up, it'll be back to where it was before. Okay? Does that make sense? Mm hmm. Okay. Okay. Good job. Good job. <laughs> Two in a row. Right. <laughs> okay. So. Don't worry, this isn't going on YouTube. <laughs> it's just going to be for the two of us to... It'll be a blooper reel. Right, right. <laughs> okay, so now, um, I like to try and uncoil the line so it's not getting all twisted. Now, this is a, an old needle. You always want to change to a fresh needle. Now, on your line that we're dispensing with the fresh line, there comes a little cap that goes on this part right here. Okay, I do recommend you keep that. That way you can just take this off and put that little cap back on afterwards. But if you lose it, which is common, just leave your needle on, okay? And so this line has a, what we refer to as a lure lock. You can twist it to lock it, okay? So if I put this needle here and twist that part up, it will stay, okay? And this is not something that you have to twist very mm. hard. You literally just want it barely holding on. That way, for when you change it, it's easier mm -hmm. to take it oh, off yeah. because otherwise it gets very difficult and um, you can accidentally stab yourself as you're trying to um, change it out. So now, the needles come with, this is the cap that goes with that. Mm -hmm. huh? Yeah, we're dispensing. Each, each needle has its own cap, protective cap, mm -hmm. okay? So you place your needle on and then very gently twist it up, okay? And that will lock it down. Okay, now to change your needle, okay, you twist that down and then you very gently just twist that off like so. Every now and then your line will become, this part will, sometimes this part will drop down. Okay, well it's not wanting, let me show you that. But if this piece, the twisty piece, slides down like so, all you gotta do is just bring it back up top, okay? And that way it'll, you can twist it again, okay? Now, one thing that's very important, when you're first starting to handle needles, any syringes, things like that, you always wanna understand that there is a natural bounce back, okay? So when you go to pull this cap off, it's very, t very common to wanna go like that. Most people don't mm. think they do, but I can guarantee they do, okay? And this is an 18 gauge needle. It's a very large bore needle because we're wanting to give a good amount of fluids over a short amount of time. You typically only have a certain number of minutes for your kitty to tolerate this, okay? And having the fluids warm certainly help with that, okay? So you're going to, when you first remove your needle, I want you to get in the habit or your cap of your needle have some distance between her so you're not accidentally elbowing her in the face but whatever your dominant hand is is the one I want you to remove the cap with so with your I'm right-handed so I'm using my left hand to hold the line and then I'm going to take that needle cap and I'm just going to go straight out and I want you to over exaggerate this movement especially in the beginning when you're first getting used to it okay um, because it's very common to, to do this and then you poke yourself and it's, it's Okay, so I do recommend having some band-aids on hand, you know, in case it happens. Now, to recap your needle, how I recommend doing this is to very gently touch your needle here, come up, and then close it in. Okay, um, so again, I'll show you that again. So, over-exaggerate, okay, and then to recap, place your needle, bring it up, 
and then slide it on. Okay, and I keep it over my fingers closer to this end as opposed to this end because if your angle is odd, sometimes you can poke through the plastic. It's not easy to do, but just as a habit, I tend to go lower. That way my fingers are away from the needle itself. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, so when you're going to give the fluids, okay, you want her head on the direction um, opposite of your dominant hand, okay, because you're gonna wanna use your dominant hand to go through, okay? So I'm gonna mm -hmm. remove my needle cap, okay? And then you're going to very gently pick up some skin, okay? Now, when you do this, you can do it either this way or you can do it this way. Now, for a senior kitty, either way will work, but they both are possible to poke through both sides of the skin okay because they tend to be very lean and it's very easy to do so so what you can also do is pick it up and then do a little roll like that take your needle okay and then in a very smooth motion just slide it in like so okay so 